This is Blackboard Report, Man to Man. We're honored to have on our very first guest, the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed, 155-pound bare-knuckle champion, Luis Baboon Palomino. Hey, champ, how you doing, man? Thanks for coming. <laughs> Great, my brother, man. So, always a pleasure and honor to be here with you, man. Man, I've been dying to say that, okay? <laughs> so that introduction is one that I would get in any ring, anywhere, <laughs> and just give me the mic. Just give me the mic for Baboon. So look, speaking of Baboon, I've always meant to ask you, how'd you get that name? <laughs> did somebody give you a name? Where did that name Baboon uh, come to fruition? So uh, Baboon comes from my days of capoeira. You know, for those people that don't know about capoeira, capoeira is a Brazilian martial art that was mostly brought by the slaves in Africa that were transported to Brazil by the Portugal. And together with the Brazilians, they came up with capoeira, which was like a hidden art inside a dance form, a lot of ac acrobatics and stuff like that. I've seen uh, some clips of capoeira from Brazil, but you're also an instructor, aren't you? are you not? Yeah, I'm a certified professor in Capoeira, and I speak Portuguese because of Capoeira. So in Capoeira, there's instruments and, and songs you have to sing, so I have to learn how to play the instruments and sing, really? and I picked up the language. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that about the, uh, that Capoeira coming from Africa, or basically a mix mm -hmm. of African and South American mm -hmm. culture. Look how many uh, UFC champions now right? <laughs> from Africa. What? And Ganu is from Cameroon, I think. Yep. Uh, Usman. Usman. And Adesanya. And Adesanya. They're both now Nigerians. Yeah, all three. Uh, so it makes sense to me. <laughs> I got to ask you a question, man. As we sit here and um, converse. I say to myself, man, how long have we known each other? We've known each other for a while. For years, man. For years now. I mean, I've been fighting, I said, about 14 years pro now. Mm-hmm. And I, I met you right in the beginning. Uh, I think I met you. I met you when I did one of the first uh, promotions that I was, I was directly involved with. I think it was CFA. CFA and with Bongos yeah. back in yeah, that day, bongos, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> back in days. that day, yeah. And you and I, I think... I had interviewed you at that time. That particular fight, you were very upset because, <laughs> and I told you, it was a friend of yours, yeah. and you took it, to me, you took it easy on that guy. <laughs> and then when you finally said, you know something, I better open up, it was a little bit too late for the open up, but it is what it is. Yeah. But since then, my friend, okay, uh, I've seen you do some amazing, <laughs> amazing work. Uh, speaking of the capoeira, we were sp talking about uh, how many African champions there are in UFC right now. And, of course, we brought up Nganu, Usman, and uh, Adesanya. What did you think of that fight last night? Did you watch it? Oh, yeah, man, it was great. I, um, to be very honest, I kind of fell asleep a little early because mm -hmm. I put some work in earlier. Sure. You know, and I uh, needed, needed to get that rest. But um, I caught up to it today. And it was, right. It, was, it looked good. It looked good. It was it good. It looked like good you stuff. put on a clinic, stuff. that guy. I, re I really thought Vittorio was going to bring a little more, to be honest, you know? But Adesanya, He looked frustrated uh, to me by yeah, round Adesanya, three. Adesanya is ahead of his time, man. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to be there for a long time. Um, what do you think about the, his move up in weight this earlier? He went and tried it at what? I think it was just a little too early. And, and it wasn't the best choice. I mean, look at this big old strong dude yeah, yeah. that he picked to move up on, you know? Like, yeah, man. You know, I think it was a little too early, you know? And, and the, the person just wasn't, you know? Yeah. The fight, like, look, people, people think that Connor is this great, awesome fighter because of this and because of that. In the end of the day, Connor did the things that he did because he got the right fights that he needed at the right time. Well, let me ask you, though, the difference in weight between what do they fight at, 185, and then from 185 to what, 205? Yeah. That's 20 pounds. You think they should have another division in between? Yeah, at some point they have to have it, man. They, they, have, they, can, they definitely can afford it already. 20 pounds. Yeah, lot, 20 man. pounds. And then you got to think about it like this. Look, for, I'll give you an example, right? 
I fight. I fought most of my career at 155. Right. I'm back to 155 right now. Right. I was fighting 145 in the end of my career. Sure. Right. But most fighters that I fought could never do 145. So just imagine the size of them. Yeah. Right? How big they are. They can never do 45. I could do 45, 55. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's 185ers that can never do. I mean, uh, two of fighters that can never do 185. No. So these dudes are huge. You know. So you have that 20 pound difference. That's a in lot. the weight class, but you don't know how much they're coming down from. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then when you start the grappling and the wrestling, that, that's when it takes effect, you know? I want to get back to the, uh, we, we were talking about the baboon, how you got that name. Tell me some more about the capoeira, how you got so, that name. So capoeira, uh, when, when, I, when I came to, to Miami, I came to Miami from Cali. I got here at the age of 13 going on 14. From Cali? And, uh, from California, yeah. Okay. When I first came from Peru, I landed in California. I did boxing for three years. Once my father went to prison, my mom had to move on. Uh, we came to Miami. And when we came to Miami, I couldn't find a boxing gym anywhere. So my mom was not going to let me go, like, on three buses, like, an hour and a half. I don't know where mm -hmm. to get to a boxing gym, where we were living, you know? And then the gang activity, you know, it was, it was crazy. So I found a friend of mine named Mickey. And okay. Mickey, Mickey was training with Cesar Carnero, which is the head coach for MMA Masters. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And, and he told me, you know, no, I, I do capoeira, you know. Like, and back in Cali, I used to box uh -huh. and I used to break dance. So then he like, yeah, okay. you know, and he showed me the video of only the strong, you know. Yeah, the, you know, yeah, yeah. The acrobatics and the fight. I'm like, man, that's kind of cool. And I went and tried it out with him. So when Mickey took me to meet Cesar, Cesar wasn't here. Cesar was in Thailand filming the movie The Quest with Van Damme. Ah. Uh, so I never met Cesar. Okay. In that time. At that time. At that time, I met uh, Mestre, you call him Master, right? Mestre Vandele. And Mestre Vandele was a guy that was in charge of Cesar's group while he was filming. Okay, was MMA Masters already formed by that time? No, no. nowhere near existence. All right. okay. Nowhere near existence. So this is like way back, Cesar even became an a MMA trainer. Cesar became an MMA trainer through me. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, as the years passed. So in that time, I hadn't met Cesar yet, I met Dele. Dele opened his own group called Aboli Sound, meaning abolition. Right. And Aboli Sound's logo was this right here. Oh, I see the baboon. Uh-huh. And I was the first one out of the group because when he, when he told me that Cesar was coming back, I had already been training with him for like about eight months a year. You know, it was six to, six to eight months, you know. And he said, look, Cesar's coming back. I know you came here looking for him, but I'm going to be moving on, starting my own group. You know, you can go ahead and meet him now and start training with him. I said, no. I started with you, and yeah, I'm going to finish gonna with you. Yeah, I'm going to remain with you, all you right. Know, yeah, and I started with you, I'm going to finish with you. I haven't even met him yet. Mm -hmm. Now, look, I've got something that I want to ask you. I'm going to throw out a couple names to you. Hmm. Just give me the first thing that comes to your mind when I throw out these names. Logan Paul. <laughs> this is some how come to your face. Logan right Paul, man. Hell of a businessman. Yes, sir. Hell of a businessman. What are you gonna do, man? You know, can't hit on that. Man knows how to man knows how to advertise himself, man. Yeah. You know. A lot of people gonna ride yeah. that train now. Oh yeah. Hard. Oh yeah. Got to give it's it. This to social him. media world, you know, he knows how to ride that that wave really good. He showed me something about getting in there. Yeah. All right. He trains too. Right? Yeah. He trains. Tell me he's got he a put, brother too that's coming you know, up. Both of Jay Paul looking for they put in that work, man. Yeah. They do. I've seen. Yeah. Them. I've seen them, man. They ain't just walking in there and laying no. down. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying their best. Yeah. They're trying. They're and, trying. And it's, it's a precious chance, man, in this game. <laughs> Another one that I love. Nate Diaz. Paul Savage, man. <laughs> real OG right there, man. Real. That's, that's as real as it gets. That's it, bro. That's as real as it gets. That, that's a true reminder of my time in Cali. That's, that was the mentality. That yeah, was he's the from lifestyle. Stockton. That was, that was, that was Cali. Tells that was you. Cat. That was Cat. That was Cat. Gangster Mouth Fly. That was it. That was it right there. He's for real. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Almost knocked him out. Almost, man. It was close. <laughs> he should have. He should have just gone for it. <laughs> oh. You know he, he was the pointing. He waited. Yep. Yeah. He, he should have gone for it. If he had right jumped on him right that moment, yeah. If he had jumped on that moment, it would have been done. Reggie Barnett. <laughs> he welcomed that boxer into the square circle. Yeah, you know? he did. You know, he welcomed into. I, I think. You roughed him up a little too much because he, there could have been more brought out of Reggie Barnett. Mm -hmm. like, there could have been more damage inflicted if he wouldn't have roughed him up so, so much. 
but he had the right idea that this is in the boxing. What's know? his background, you know? I don't know, man. I think Baron Knight has done just, a shit. I heard, I've heard that he has over 100 fights. Like, I got a whole lot of bare knuckle fights. Yeah, he ain't no joke. Yeah, yeah no, dude's ready, man. He's... Speaking of, Dot Nguyen. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's not what I call him, man. I call, I, call him, I call him Dat, the slutty little gnat. That's wow. what I call him. Wow. That slutty little gnat. Wow. Just, you know, I call him a slut because it's, a, it's, a, it's like a slut looking for attention, you know? This dude was somebody that was a little different, you know? Looked good boxing, looked good doing his mm -hmm. thing. And I supported the man. Showed him love, you know. Yeah, like, oh yeah, he put an ideal. Yeah, basket rooting, to sleep rooting for. Yeah, rooting. Yeah, Abby, Abby, Abby I was there the rooting heart. for. Like, oh man, that's Abby cool. heart now. They're coming out with a Raider hat, you know. Yeah, I, it was cool. Okay, so I showed him love. You know, All right. what does this guy do, man? This guy goes, and he's calling out the heavyweight champion, and then he wants to talk about fighter IQ and how smart he is, right? Yes. I've but you, you calling out the heavyweight champion, and, and at that. first, I thought it was a joke. Mm -hmm. I thought he was joking. Called you out, too? Yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, okay. But the dude, the dude was dead serious about oh, fighting Joey Beltran. I didn't think you The heavyweight champion. No, he's dead serious. Like, I thought he wasn't. I thought yeah, he was I playing around. I, I we thought it. it was a joke. My, my girlfriend's Japanese. She's yeah. like, oh, you know, it's an Asian joke. It's yeah, Asian. yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby, baby, he's not playing around. I mean, he's serious about it. And he's, like, very delusional about it, you know? So then he goes... His fight happens. He takes the title. And now uh, nobody's speaking about him. Only two weeks passed. No, they took the, they they took, took it, the belt from him. He took the belt from, from Johnny Belfort. The fight's over. Two weeks passed. Nobody's talking about him no more. I made this video in frustration of not getting a fight. Right. I remember. Yeah. And it, was, it, was, it wasn't like a planned video, man. It was a little story. Yeah, I it remember. It was live. Some, uh, you know, somebody got the phone and I looked at the camera, I said what I said. But the guys that you were talking about were legitimate well, guys. One, that, yeah, 170. I'm, I'm challenging everybody, 45, 55, 175, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and here comes this dude, because he sees the, the, the video go kind of viral, right? And he just loved the, the fact that there was attention in that video. He had to say something. So that's why it's that. That's when he player. comes out trying to call me out and I don't know what. And I'm like, so first he calls me out. This is where I called him out at, right? He calls me out. Yeah, I saw that. And I replied right away, okay, you got it, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, me and you at 145. So I don't know what he thought I was going to say. I was like, okay, you got it. This, this yeah. That's what I'm, I'm asking Well, for. I remember when you did that video. You started 145. You said it. Yeah, 45, 55, 55, 45 to 75. Like, yeah. You said it. I mean, it. I, I was never targeting 75. Right. There was a, a head said, I was targeting. I would, there was it. one head I was targeting yeah. at 170 for a super fight, which was... Thiago Alves. Okay, yes. And then he didn't want to fight me at 170. He said it would do nothing for his career. So I said, okay, so I'll fight you at 175 for the 175-pound title. Then. Okay. You know, and I'm not crazy like that. I don't yeah. believe I can beat everybody at 175. I can beat a quite few of them, mm -hmm. but I don't believe that I can stay undefeated at 175. I was never aiming for the 175-pound title. I was yeah, aiming that's for a the head. That's head. I was aiming for Thiago's head. They're big. I was aiming for him at 170. He didn't want to meet me at 70 where he did his entire career on in the UFC. So I said, okay, I'll go the extra mile, and I'll go 175 okay. to fight you for the title, just to antagonize him. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and I probably would have vacated the title. You know, it wasn't after that title. It was after the, because I'm not delusional like that. No. You know, that was talking about, yeah, we'll meet at 45, and when I say, and I write, okay, yes, let's do it, he then backs he up. Quiet. Got quiet. No, he backed up. He literally backed up. He wrote, oh, no, you know, not yet. Uh, uh, you know, this fight is too big. And the money's too little. We got to build it up. And I said, shut the fuck up then. What the fuck are you talking about? What would you tell a youngster, when I say youngster, 17 to 20, 21, who's watching now you, uh, Hector, <laughs> you, Lee, and goes, man, I want to do that. Okay, I'm going to do that. I want that fame and adulation. I want to be a champion too. What would you tell a youngster from here in SoFlo the best direction to go? What would be your advice? I, I'll give him three things. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, These uh, this are the three things that I think has gotten me here today. And it took me a while to learn it, man. You know, it took me a long time. It took me a lot of losing to learn this, you know? For one, you need to train to improve. Okay, there's a difference between training to get ready for a fight 
and there's a difference between training to improve your craft. Okay? Most of these youngsters, from what I've seen in most gyms, right, and I've been around, um, they only focus on the next fight. And once yes. that fight happens, they're partying. Exactly. And especially if you're in Miami. Yeah. If you're in Miami, you know, the club and the female, yeah, I know because I was there. I know. It's too easy to just fall into that and the smoking, the drinking, and the partying. The partying, man. You know, you're partying because you feel you want that one fight that doesn't mean shit. It's just one fight compared to the rest of your career, you know? And it's great that you want that one fight. You're, you're on the right path. But if you're not training to improve, then you're, ta you're staying in one place. One you thing uh, about you, and I'm going to say this, uh, there was someone in, you know, in our crew who said to me, man, that guy Palomino, how does he uh, stay at that level, <laughs> all right, for all this time? <laughs> and my response to that was, for the time I've known you for eight, probably nine years, I've never seen you out of shape. <laughs> You're always ready. I mean, it may not be peak at the time, like what you're getting ready to yes. do now, but you are never not ready. Yes. Okay? Yes. And that's one thing that I noticed about you. I'm going to tell you what one of your coaches said to me, because I asked him, okay, El Tigre. I said, hey, man, what is it about Baboon that makes him so at a high level continuously for such a long period of time? He told me two things. One, the discipline. Yes. That's what you're talking about. Yep. Am I wrong? Not. Was he wrong? Nope. And heart. Now, you can't. You can't teach okay. that. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you can't, you know, you can't practice height. Yeah. You can't practice. So that, that's what, that's what yeah, brings me. That's just me. natural. That's just. Yeah. That's what brings me to the second part. Right. right? So part one is you want to train to improve. You don't want to train mm -hmm. just to get ready for a fight because the fight is always going to come. And, uh, and to get ready for a fight is six to eight weeks, eight to ten weeks max. You'll be ready for a fight if you maintain yourself as you just uh -huh. did. Number two would be, you know, you're disciplined not only in camp but out of camp, but the discipline has to be matched with your recovery. Oh, okay. okay, so my mom used to say you are what you eat, and, and uh, you really are what you eat, you know. I eat well, and because I've listened to my body now, I sleep well, I rest well, and I do anything that has to do with recovery, whether it's massage therapy, ice baths, you name it, you name it, cupping, like you name it, physical therapy, you name it, whatever it is to recover, I'm on top of it. I study it, I wow. research it, I do it, I apply it. So I do a lot of recovery. I'm 40 years old, I have to do it. I have to rest more. I'm, I'm more sufficient when I rest more okay. than overtraining. I, I overtrain most of my life. Yeah. Now I rest more, I eat better. That's why I keep myself leveled. You know what it takes. And when maintain. it's time to get ready for a fight, it's just boop, okay, it's a right. little jump. That's why at this age, I still perform the way I perform. That's Man. why I still look the way I look. Amazing. But let's get, let's get back to that, because what I heard that say, all right, is that he does not want to fight for a small am amount of money. Now, I don't know what um, Mr. Feldman is paying you all. That's none of mm. my business, mm. okay? But I do understand that as at this point, they've uh, taken his belt back. Is that... Yeah, yeah, they're taking this belt. Yeah, so look, this was going on, right? There's been a lot of back and forth going on with me and him, right? With, with Dad and I. Yeah. And it's because he's gotten very disrespectful. Because I tried him. He tried me, I tried him. I, I, I treated him with respect at first. You come disrespecting me, you try to knock on my door, then hey, then, then let's do what we gotta do, man. I invited him to come over here anytime so he can reconsider. Say, hey, I'll spar you with 16 ounce gloves, headgears. Right. So you don't get no brain damage. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you can reconsider on a fucking bare knuckle fight. On a bare knuckle fight, I'll break the bones in his face. Hey, what's he at? 135? He's 135, man. He ain't knocking people out of that weight. Hey, he knocked out the guy before that. Okay. Did he knock out Johnny Belfort? No. No. If you look at his boxing record, how many knuckles he has? No. Like two or three. Two, maybe hey, three. And you're going to come and He's knock me out? Able, and Abby. then he has the audacity to say that I'm scared of fighting him? Like, what are you talking about? When yeah. You, when you called me out, I said yes. I and heard then you all, backed up. I heard all of that. Yeah. So at the point, you got Reggie Barnett, number one contender at 135, calling him out for the fight, and he's saying no, basically. He's saying no because of the money. That's he's, what he said. That's what he said. Man, okay. 
All right, let's do this. Let him, we'll, we'll leave the numbers in, in quiet, right? But he knows the right. truth. Let him, think, let him think about the money he's made in his boxing career. Let's think about that. Let him think about that, right? Because if he was making more money in, in his boxing career, why is he in bare knuckle right now? Yeah, but I've, uh, I heard an interview we had the other day that he was saying that uh, his boxing career, he was not making exactly. much at That's all. That's my point. And you, you and don't make, look, in boxing, you don't make money until you get to those big fights, man. Everybody yeah. knows that. It takes a while to make some money in boxing. And when you do make money, you make big money. Yeah. But he never got to that level, okay? So I'm sure that he's getting paid more than he ever got paid in boxing. He's getting paid in bare knuckle right now. How old is that? Uh, I think he's in his 30s. I'm I'd like, not, to, talk, not, I'd like sure. to talk to him, but at any rate. But whatever. Yeah. So, so I, I know I'm pretty sure that he's getting paid more today than he was before, right? So he's talking about the excuse of more money but, when he has Reggie Barnett right there. I was going to say, this, if yeah. you want the big money, that's then, the then, one. Then, okay. And you're the champion. Okay, you want to call yourself a champion, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so, so he called himself a champion. I'm seeing him still taking pictures with the belts that he's been stripped from. Yes. Okay. That's okay. known. All right, so every fighter... Every fighter and every hardcore fan, and you should know this too, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know this, is that you know that you are not the champ until you defend your title. Exactly. Okay, so you making all these demands without even defending your title? What the man is right there though. Like, Reggie Barnett, that, okay, okay, so, so you, to you on a, you're asking for money. On a all right, so, so, so negotiate a little better. Have your manager contact, you know, Dave, be like, hey, look, once he defends his belt, we gotta renegotiate his deal. You know, we'll do one more fight. We're going to show you our worth. He's going to prove that he's a true champion. He's going to take out the number one contender with a, with, a, with a spectacular knockout or whatever, right? That makes sense. Yeah, and then we can, we're going to negotiate again for the, for the next contract as a, cha as a legi legitimate champion. Well, that's what you but do. He, that's what you do. That's, exactly, <laughs> but he's not doing that. Okay. He don't want to step up to Reggie Burnett, right? He doesn't want to see uh, Johnny Belfort again. Like, and then he's talking about coming to take my belt? Yeah, and not, fighting Joy Beltran? Yeah, none, none of that. Get makes the sense. fuck out. Next one, Tyler Goodjohn, <laughs> your boy. <laughs> <That's adult. laughs> Man, I know you're waiting for a piece. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Tyler Goodjohn, man. Look, let's put it all on the table, man. Look, Tyler has been talking about, and, and most people say that it's excuses, and I, anybody can see it as an excuse. I could even see, I see it as an excuse myself, but there, there are the things that are in there that may be, you know, some truth to it, you know? Everybody's judging Tyler right now from his debut in Bare Knuckle Lipsy, okay? Well, from his debut against uh, Crazy Horse, who calls himself Felony now, right? Never heard of him before that. Uh, all right, exactly. So, oh, okay. So, in his debut, he didn't look great. He didn't look great against the washed up Charles Bennett. I knocked out Charles Bennett nine years ago in the first round. When, he, when Charles. he was dangerous. When Felony he was dangerous. Charles. When he was dangerous. When he was still doing flips. When he was dangerous, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He was still doing flips. Yeah, when he was knocking people out, he was scary to fight on feet. Yeah, right. I was a fan. Yeah. I love watching him. You never knew what he was going to get. You never know what you're going to get into. Exactly. Him. And people would beat him by decision or by submission mm -hmm. or holding him down, but not striking. No. I knocked him out. Yes. With a blown knee, by the way. Okay. And here he comes, you know, nine years later, eight, nine years later, and he brought the fight to Tyler, man. Tyler. Tyler. Tyler's talking about all his head movement, this and that. He came out with four cuts. I counted four cuts. He was cut here, 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 here. You know, so so much for his head movement. He came out all cut up. Charles didn't have a cut on him. I think Charles won that fight. Tyler is saying. What I'm getting is he, he's fighting for his survival with his gym back there in London or something. So he is very serious. Yeah. It isn't just about you. It's not so much personal. It is his livelihood, to yeah. maintain his livelihood. That's the idea that I got. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I... And I saw him carrying that big thing. <laughs> what is that thing? I saw him carrying the big thing, so, hey. Look, so, so look, it comes down to this, right? People are judging him for that fight. He says that he caught COVID before that fight. And I've seen some Really? People, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he, he caught COVID. And I've seen some people that are like 60 years old and just 
I have a little fever and pass in two, three days. And I've seen some people like my, my strength and conditioning trainer. Yes. Which is a freak of nature, does triathlons for fun. And he was knocked out for 17 days. Uh -huh. So maybe he did catch COVID, and I think it was true. And maybe he was, the recovery wasn't well. You know, supposedly when he was here, he was alone. He didn't have a trainer. You know, he was, his mind wasn't in the right place. Right, and had to shut his Look, this, down. This, this, this is what it comes down to, man. Tyler must have been something in the UK, in England. He must have had something going for him because he has a big following, okay? He had something going on. Something was going right at some point in time. Baboon, right? you're my boy, man. No, Look, no, but check this out. Check this, this out. guy jumped in the no, no. in the square I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to okay, that. Okay, while yeah. after you get your championship, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. Look, I know what he did, but I'm I'm looking at everything that people don't really see. You know, you can't overlook anybody. I don't look. I don't overlook anybody. This dude at some point has something going on right in his life. This dude at some point was doing professional boxing, and then he came into the bare-knuckle world in England, and he was 4-0, and, and he was a champion in England. So at right now, as of right now, you're looking at the England bare-knuckle champion against the American bare-knuckle champion. That's what you're looking at. Well, that's he's, what? He's 4-0 in bare-knuckle. Right. He won those fights. In England. And those videos are up there. Okay. And I'm 3-0 here. Mm-hmm. Okay? Somewhere along the way, this dude got caught up in his own sauce. You know what I mean? He got caught up in his own hype. Too much with the smoking and the chilling and the women and the prostitutes and I don't know what he does and, yeah, the, right. and the show off and all this. He all comes right. over here to Miami, he's living the big life, thinking okay. he is. Comes over here, snatches the mic from my hand, trying to make a show. Yeah, I saw all that. And yeah, yeah, you know, so he's, he's, you know, he's like, he got caught up in the hype. So he's what? Come you know? on, wanted to be so, Conor McGregor. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So at this point, he goes, does his debut, looks like shit. Yeah. All right. Now, from what I've seen, because I'm not, I'm not blind. From what I've seen, he's been putting in work. Mm -hmm. He's been putting in work for a long time because this fight has been delayed over and over again. Well, sure. This fight should have been, this, yeah, this yeah, fight yeah, should have happened like four months ago, five months ago. Yeah. We're going on seven months since I fought last, mm -hmm. since he snatched the mic from my hand, right? And he's been putting in work. So I believe that I'm getting the best Tyler Goodjohn that ever was. I believe that he, something clicked in his brain where he realized that the best opportunity that he had in his life is here and it's now, and he better get to work, and I think he's putting in that work. The only thing that I can say after that is that it's too little, too, too late. late. Next question. What made you decide to take the jump to bare knuckle? <laughs> uh, I can kind of guess, but I'd like to hear from you what made you take, make that decision. It was a couple of things at the same time, like all combined together. Mm -hmm. for, for one, if you, if you reflect on my career, right, in MMA fighting, I started from zero with nothing, with nobody. You know, I did a good 10 pro fights. I didn't do no amateur fights. I did a good 10 pro fights without sparring partners, without a wrestling trainer. Now, I want, the audience, I, I want the fans to hear this, okay? <laughs> so because you just gloss over it, but I'm going to stop you and bring you back to that. No amateur fights. No amateur fights, zero. Zero percent. Zero. I want the fans to hear this. Yeah. No amateur fights, just, all right, go. And I started training MMA at the age of 26, as to where now you see kids uh -huh. starting 16, 17, and whatnot, right? I started training at the age of 26. Okay? No amateur experience. I had no idea about weight classes. I had no idea that there was a 155, 145. I started fighting at 170, weighing 167, 166, 168 sometimes. And I did not look like this. Like, my body, my physique was not like this. I had to work really hard to... I started lifting weights at the age of 22. Mm -hmm. So I, it took me years to change my body. That's why I never stopped lifting. I'm still working on my body. So, no sparring partners for the first 10 pro fights. No strength and conditioning trainer, no wrestling trainer, which is the most needed, the most needed thing was wrestling. The wrestling. And I didn't have it. Yes. Not in high school, I didn't, I didn't nothing. Not yeah, because a lot of wrestlers, yeah. you see a lot of wrestlers. I didn't have Once they have that, they can pretty much oh, learn man, the strike. You dictate, you dictate the pace of the fight. Yeah. You know, where it goes. You know, me as a striker, I want, I want to be able to stay on my feet. You know, I did jujitsu instead, you know, so I you know, not to put nothing down, but if I'd have had wrestling instead of jiu-jitsu, it'd be a completely different story right now. You know? But Luis, let me say something, mm -hmm. all right? 
this bare knuckle stuff, this shit's made for you. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because you're a scrappy mother flower <laughs> anyway, all right? Uh, I could imagine you in high school and junior high and Not stories. coming up, all right? Your brothers and sisters, how many brothers and sisters? Uh, two younger sisters and three older brothers. Okay. And you what? From Cali to Miami. Miami. Now from Peru, what? Peru to Cali to Miami. Now Peru, uh, we gotta, I gotta put this in here. Peru is one of the five great the Aztecs was one of the five great civilizations <laughs> ever. You, you just Incas. have Incas. 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 Right. Presence. One of the five yes. great civilizations ever. Yeah. So from Peru, Cali, so East Coast, West Coast. Mm -hmm. That what 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 years you talk about? Eighties, nineties? Yeah, eighty. I'm an eighties baby, man. I was born in 1980. That East Coast West Coast rivalry was really whoa, <laughs> yeah. serious. Yeah, serious. Yep. Because I remember uh, I'm an East Coast guy going out to Cali at times, and wasn't pretty. I didn't get a great reception. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you come from yeah, Cali to pretty here. pretty hardcore. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. Let me ask you something. As being Latino, uh, I know being West Indian, Jamaicans, Bayesians, um, Nassau, Bahamas, we're West Indians, but it's different dialects, different yeah. cultures. Is it the same way with Latinos from L.A.? From Peru to LA to Miami, it's all California. It's all different, man. I mean, it has the similarities, of course, same right. language, same languages in, in, as a whole, but mm -hmm. it's, they're different. It's different cultures. You know, Peru is a completely different thing. Then you come to to Cali, and in Cali, I, I didn't speak English, so they think they don't care where you're from. Right. Oh yeah. They think you Mexican. You speak Spanish, you're Mexican. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it don't matter if you're Colombian, Peruvian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and I even, you know, they all ask me, like, where you from? Oh, right. Peru, like, they don't even know where the hell Peru is from. <laughs> yeah. People my age, you know, at least people my yeah, age. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, and they would just call you Mexican. You know, they just think they're you're just Mexican. Yeah, you speak Spanish or Mexican. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, that was your crowd, you know, until you come to Miami. Then, then you see everything. I noticed today that you came with two of your belts. <laughs> of course, um, both of them high level. That police gazette <laughs> belt presented to you is what that thing is, what, over 100 years old? 130 yeah, 137, 137, I think it is. Yeah. Okay, and, if, and you're a BKFC uh, 155 pound championship belt, but you're missing one. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't see it. <laughs> well, weren't you giving another belt yeah, that, back? That, that, one, that one found a home in my son's room, okay, man. Okay, back. That, that one was promised to my son. That was the Jim Adams, <laughs> the Jim Adams BKFC the championship Jim belt. Jim Adams BMF <laughs> belt. Is that who the BMF is? Well, it, was, it was a BKFC. He, <laughs> yeah. he had created his own belt. I don't know if it was Amazon or Toys R Us, but he created his own belt. He was walking around. You know, He was believed he was a champion, and he had all the rights to him, man. You know, he was in a four or five win streak, three yeah. knockouts. You know, and he really believed he was a, he was a champ, but when the title you all were friends at that, you yeah, tell we were good friends. friends. When when the title was, you know, when, in sure, the end of the day, cool. when the title was uh, offered to him, he's the one that didn't step up. Uh huh. So he went in, you know, once, once I grabbed mine, the real one, he ended up going and creating his own. I know what I had understood at the time. I didn't, I don't know. I don't know me being up in West Palm was that um, one of his coaches had. Had COVID, had COVID or something, but was, I can't go yeah. by rumor and anything. No, that was, the, that was the reason. So, you know, Jim, Jim and I, we were friends. We, mm -hmm. trained, we trained together in the past. And, you know, he gave me the call because we were scheduled to fight. Right. We were, we were in the tournament. I won the first section of the tournament. He won the first part of the tournament. We had agreed not meeting each other until the end of the tournament. Okay. But because we were friends, you know, but because you figured that was inevitable, you did that you yeah, all. Yeah, we were gonna meet, you know, right. but if we're gonna if we're gonna meet, we'll do it in the end. Okay. You know, when it's for the title. But you know, COVID hits. Sure. The, the tournament gets dismantled, and my fights start falling off. Like I had a fight coming up, then it fell off. Then I had a second fight coming up, then it fell off. Mm -hmm. So I'm like going to third camp by now, you know, and they finally say, you know what, the tournament's over. We're gonna put you to fight Jim Matters. You know, and I said, okay, great, let's go. And then Jim was like a little bit opposed. And I don't know, there was a, he, he didn't want the, the fight right away. All that time, 
everything was up in the air. Yeah. Everybody was juggling, especially the promoters yep. at the time. But, uh, I mean, if you all were supposed to go for it, go for it. Yeah, look, it, it, it wasn't even, it's not like we took so long before this conversation started. Look, right when the, when the tournament dismantled, Dave gave me the call, the promoter, and he said, you're facing, before the tournament actually, he says, you're facing Jim Addison in the second round. Okay. After we had all agreed, all three of us yes. agreed, a meeting in the end. Right. So I said, okay, no problem. What am I going to do, man? That's yeah, the boss. That is what it is. You know, that's, the, that's the boss. You know, again, that's who, that's who I got to face next. That's who I got to face next. That's what I do. Next. I fight. Yeah. So Jim said no. You know, he said, uh, you know, if it's going to be something like that, then I'm going to ask for the title shot right, right away, blah, blah. You know, because he didn't want to take the risk of fighting me before getting to the title shot. Uh-huh. I understand, you know. So it happened. What he wished for happened. I remember. He, they turned off completely the tournament, and they made the fight between us two. And we were scheduled to fight. And within maybe two weeks before the fight, he pulls out. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So he wrote to me. You know, we communicated, you know. He wrote to me. He said, hey, look, uh, I wanted you to hear from me first. And I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> here it comes, you know? He's so like, what was his proposal at the time? So he told me, look, man, you know, my, 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 uh, my, my trainer has caught in COVID, blah, 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 and, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be fighting in this, in this car, blah, blah. So I said, okay, you know, have you gotten tested? And, and he says, yeah, I got tested. Okay, have you gotten your results? No, I haven't gotten my results. Okay, but if you get your results... And you're okay. And you're okay. Are you still fighting? And I look, you know, we're going to sit this one now. I already spoke to my trainer, spoke to my family, blah, blah. So he chose to sit, sit it out. All right. And then he got all crunchy about it, you know. He got all salty about it. It, it got you know? And I, Somebody bad. else stepped up. Yeah, he was, <laughs> okay. he was four and all at the time. There was a replacement with um, Isaac Valley Flag that was three and all. Coming off a win from, uh, what's his name? Uh... With the funny, with the funny hair, I always forget, Melvin Gillard. Okay. Melvin Gillard's a savage, man. He's, he's a beast, you know? Asset Valley Flag pretty much made him quit. After, of course, uh, I think Melvin was in the third or fourth round that he fractured or broke a hand. But he quit. Yes. You know? and, and to be very honest, first, second, third round, like, Valley Flag was winning all the rounds. Yeah. It was to challenge Jim Allen's wife. Because I know that he's next. I remember at the press conference, what was that? BKFC, was it 10? 10 or 11, I, think, I don't I know. Think 10 or 11, yeah. Yeah, we're at Coco Creek. We're yeah, at, yeah. Coco it, Creek. it was to introduce the signing of Thiago Alves. Yes, and Alves and... Uh, um, Page. Van Zandt. Yep. Okay, Van Zandt. And remember, I was asking the question, I was asking Feldman, hey, look, uh, when are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? People are waiting for this. Two guys here saying that they're champions, and then you had enough. <laughs> you jumped up, grabbed the mic from me, and hey, I thought at that point that uh, you were correct. Uh, you got, he had to fight you to be the champion. Yeah. You can't, and unless he fought you, and until he fought you, that's what all of SoFlo, the rest of the country, and the world who is now the world who is watching BKFC because it's growing in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Want to see? Yeah. And it got to be here. Yeah, no, it, it was a fight to, to make. Exactly. There's, there's no hiding it. There's no running from it. I mean, it's a fight that I needed to, to, to win, and it's a fight that he needed to win. Both of us needed the, the legitimacy, you know, of having that winner being called. Back to the discipline. There, I know quite a few fighters who have been fighting as long as you have, mm. but they've never been champions. <laughs> <laughs> You've been champion at four or five different levels in different <laughs> competitions continuously. That's, that you attribute to what? Back to the discipline and the training and rest? Yeah, it's the discipline, the training, and, and, and just not giving up, man. Hey, you not, got heart. Not giving, not giving up. You can't give up. You, know, you, you got to have up. skills. Now, you, you got skills. Yeah, look, I got skills, but you have people that are born with talent, and then you have people that have to work for that, you know, yeah. for a piece of that talent. You know? 
I was never a talented kid, man. It, I, it was so hard for me to learn. It was ridiculous. Like, people say, oh, you're a talented, talented motherfucker. Mother. <laughs> you know how, how hard I had to work for? Yeah. Capoeira, I'll give you an example. Capoeira, right? Okay. There's a, a, a move called uh, Hoda Barafusa. Hoda Barafusa is Portuguese for, mm -hmm. like, screw, right? Okay. So screw so that your body. Yeah, so your body's like vertically spinning vertical and land on one leg. Right. I've you know, seen you, that. You know how long it took me to learn that, man? I, I think I I drilled that on the beach for a good six to eight months. How many times did you fall? Do you think it <laughs> hundreds, if not hundreds. thousands. Hundreds if not thousands. I wouldn't land it. Here comes this kid named Wally, my little bro. Sure. Right? This fucker gets it like in one day, man. That's talent. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like in one day. Like and then within a week, he's doing it not only one way, he does it the other way. Like, get the, <laughs> you know, that's talent. You know what I mean? Like, I have to, like, bust my ass. Now, when, Repeat, repeat, repeat. When you say that now, and at the level that you are, when you see youngsters that you say to yourself, that kid, <laughs> if. If. Do <laughs> you have a tendency to grab them and go, come with me, let me show you something? Or do you want to let them see it for themselves, get it by themselves? You get the itch when mm -hmm. you see that talent in them. Man, as a fighter, and I've trained people for years, you know, mm -hmm. you get that issue like, oh, man, because you look at people like projects, you know, yeah. and you know what you can make out of them, right? I don't go for those. Oh. Uh. I, don't, I don't go for those. Because those are, they're, they pop up and... Like, I've seen it too many times where, uh -huh. where it's like they depend so much on talent that everything's just about the talent and the work ethic is not, it doesn't match. One hit wonders. Yeah, so there's this one kid, right? This Mexican kid, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the UFC gym. I was a coach there for a little while. He was my very first student in the UFC gym. Okay. Here comes this kid, 16 years old, over 200 pounds. Okay, he's shorter than me. Over 200 pounds, maybe 215, 220. He's in high school. Mm -hmm. And he comes and tells me, hey, you know, because I want to, my first student, you know, I just got to the gym. Oh, because I want to do MMA, I don't want to be a fighter, you know, blah, blah. Just, the story everybody tells you. Sure. But then he told me one thing that changed my mind, you know, that made me want to grab him and give him the cheapest deal I can give him to help him out, because, you know, low, low income, you know. Mm -hmm. So he tells me, you know, yeah, you know, I, I wake up in the mornings, you know, before I go to high school, high school. Right. You know, before I go to school, I go and I run three, four miles. Really? <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> oh, like, hold on, what you say? He says, yeah, no, I wake up before I go to school, and I go in a, in a run. And he's already over 200 pounds. 16 years old. He was 220 pounds. Wow. Okay. That kid, okay. that, that's what I look for. Right. If I'm going to look for anything. That's what interests me, because that's work ethic. Mm -hmm. That's determination. That's sacrifice. Those are the things that you cannot teach, like that heart. Nobody had to tell him. Nobody got to tell him. He does it on his own. Self-motivation. That's a champion mentality. Got you. In a rock. It's okay. a diamond hitting inside a rock just to scrape out. Okay. You know? This kid ends up dropping to 170, fighting at 155, mm -hmm. and just fought at 145. Nice. Walking around 160 now. Nice. That's All what right. he's done in, he's now 18. He just turned 18. Okay. He's getting ready. Yeah. He's about there. He's about there. Like, about but, there. Know, I brought him here to Young Tigers. Uh -huh. you know? Excellent. But that's, that's what turns me That's in, you know the question I, mean? I had for you. That's one of them. Another one is... His name is Gio. <laughs> I don't want to ask champion. you the name. He's going to be a champion. I figured you would tell me He's going to be a champion. To. He's going to be a champion. All right. All right, Gio. You heard it, bro. Well, brother, for this time, <laughs> for this time, first of all, uh, Go ahead, take it to him. Take it to him, champ. Yeah, All right. Know. I thank you so much, man, thank for you. taking this time out of your training uh, to make this a reality for me. And I love you, man. Nah, anytime, okay? You know, you know how we do. Any message you got out here for your fans, tickets, um, your your Instagram, whatever social media you got, tell, tell them what. Tell them yeah. where to go. So for starters, man, follow me at. Luis Baboon on Facebook. I have a fan page, Luis Baboon Palomino. That's for social media. That's all I work with. Other than that, I just want to thank all my sponsors, man. And, you know, thank you, James, for the opportunity once again. Oh, you know, on, always man. a pleasure, always an honor, <laughs> man. But uh, Young Tigers Foundation, where I train at, with Eric Altieri Castaños, the world's famous street, uh, Fish Street Gym, with Dino Spencer, and the workout spot with Avner Pareda. FYI, Florida Yas International. 
Mr. Ralph Navarro, his son, my, my manager, Christian Navarro, uh, DGM that always dressed me nice for all my walkouts and training gear, 1-800 Injured, Sativa, uh, Ceviches by Divino, Miami Made Bulldogs, and Bonnell Marine. You know, and, and of course, I don't see the bell bonds, everybody else that helps me and supports me, man. It's very hard to do this type of camps without the sponsorships that help you focus only on the fight. So thank you all for everything. Thank you, James. <laughs> Blackboard Report. Special thanks to El Tigre, Marty, and the Young Tigers Foundation here in Miami for having us. I'm James Mann. Look for us on our next episode of Man to Man on Blackboard Report. Baboon, boom, my <laughs>